all righty welcome everybody to another stream let me just switch the screen hello <laughs> good to see you all again um hello it's me the network uh, and in this video we're going to be looking at setting up monitoring for computer networks um reason i'm making this video is actually i recently had to start looking for somebody to look after the knock um, at the company i work for so that they could essentially monitor the computer network and look after the things and see if links go down or up and report things and i figured it would actually be a nice topic to put into a video as well so that people can actually see why we need monitoring what's useful about it and how easy and quick it can be to set up sometimes as well so i've already got my eve lab open i'm just going to continue off of our big um, network berg stream lab that i created before because it's got a ton of things that we can already monitor, which is great. And I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And hey, look, <laughs> it's a familiar looking lab. So in this lab, my goal now is just to maybe set up something, a monitoring system, so that I'd be able to see if my routers maybe go off and also what utilization on the routers look like, just so that I have a a good overview of what's happening on my network because if a router goes down it is critical for me as a network engineer administrator architect whatever to know it's gone off we, we need to be able to um, be proactive in fixing issues on the network we can't wait for a link or a, a, a router to drop and then we find out an hour or two later from our customers, hey, your network isn't working because that's gonna cause a lot of frustration. And the quicker we are at fixing and finding issues, the better for us as, a, as engineers, you know, it, it looks pretty good because uh, it helps the whole network. So let's quickly just start up our routers. And what I'm gonna be using for um, my monitoring is PRTG reason being it has a free trial you can set up like 100 sensors well you can set up as many sensors as you want with the free trial which lasts 30 days and after the trial expires then it's limited to like um, 100 sensors or something so prtg is quite useful for that a lot of people use it um, another familiar monitoring system you might see is solar winds and um, that's actually quite a very normal one to see a lot of people use that uh, you might pick up stuff like iris or there's even f um, free stuff like um, on linux that people develop just for monitoring purposes micritic comes with the dude as well which kind of does the same thing but i'm not going to go into the dude because i'm not very familiar with uh, all of the setup i, I might have a look at it but i, I don't want to like spend time trying to figure out the dude when I just want to show you how to set up monitoring and how quick it is. Because in essence, there's two things that you really want when you're monitoring a computer network. And that is you want to monitor uptime. And for that, we can use ICMP. And we want to monitor maybe stuff like utilization on the links, which is we're going to use SNMP for that because SNMP will allow us to graph that information to a monitoring system. All right. I've started up my network. I just quickly want to connect and see <laughs> where's what. Um, I need to just look at my neighbors, connect onto Ramon quickly. And if I recall, I've got router seven here. So router seven will be the first router we're actually going to start um, looking at adding monitoring for. Let's just connect onto this. I just want to figure out how exactly I want to do this because I might want to actually connect router seven directly to the net as well. Um, let's actually do that. So I am going to just close this and I'm going to connect, uh, let me just refresh, router seven to the internet, <laughs> which is just my actual computer. Let's have a look here. Router seven, I've connected ethernet four on there. So let's connect back onto router seven. Well, let's, let's just connect. I should be able to connect directly as a neighbor now, to be honest, let's go to our neighbors. Yes, there's router seven, admin blank. And let's just quickly assign an IP address in the 192.168.74 dot whatever range, which is what my management system is in. So let's add 192.168.74. Let's maybe make it uh, 30. Don't know why. <laughs> I 
I just thought about three zero there. And we will assign that to ether four. So before we jump into VRTG, I just want to make sure I can actually get to router seven. So on router seven, let's see, can I ping 192.168.74.2? I can. And from my actual Windows computer, can I ping 192.168.74.30? I can. This is fantastic. All right. So let's quickly open up PRTG first. Um, I might just go to PRTG's browser, open it up here. This might launch in my Chrome, which is fine. And then I'm just going to scoot it up over here. So this is a freshly installed PRTG. I haven't done anything. I've actually just removed some basic sensors, but it's got its default login credentials still. So I'm just logging in. And now it's giving me a, a overview of what's happening on my system, but I'm not really too interested on my computer. I just want to start monitoring networks. So first thing that I'm going to do is on the PRTG, I'm going to add a new device. And this device will actually be <laughs> router seven. That's going to be crazy. So I might just put this under my root. We can add it to the local probe, I guess. Um, the device name will be router seven. We're going to connect using an IPv4 address. You can connect using IPv6, but in this case, I'll connect using IPv4. And now what is the address of the router that I'm connecting to? So in my example, it was 192.168.74.30. And I've got some cool icons here as well. So I might just add this icon and let's hit okay. And if I refresh my devices, let's just see, do I pick anything up there? There's my router seven. It's under the local probe, but it doesn't have any sensors at the moment. So it knows if I click on there, it knows what router seven's IP is, but I'm not actually monitoring anything yet. So let's add some monitoring by just adding a sensor. And PRTG comes with some very nice basic sensors that you can just use. It does use stuff like MIPS as well. So you can have more um, control over the stuff that you're monitoring. But I just want to do basic ICMP at the moment. So I might just search for ping. And there is a ping. That is awesome. So I can just use the ping sensor. And with PRTG, I can set certain values, but I'll just leave all of this default for now because I don't need to do anything special. And I, hey, I've got a little ping sensor. How awesome is that? So this ping sensor's job will now be to tell me if the router goes down or if it's up or what the latency looks like. That's actually going to be pretty cool. Uh, let's just click on the ping sensor. I can now see that it's up, but here is the nice thing about monitoring systems and most of them come with graphs like this to show you how long has the link been up like i can look at the live graph so this just looks at the last like two hours um and you can specify things you can go into like a specific view look at a specific time but all the monitoring systems do this most of them sorry <laughs> i mean it's not say all of them and then there's this one that doesn't do it but typically their jobs as monitoring systems is to create graphs or reports to tell you what the status of the links are, how good the links are. And right now I've got one little link on router seven that's being monitored. Um, I'm curious actually to see it's zero to one millisecond. So that is actually really good time. Um, I might want to do something fun by just going back into eve so let me just minimize my prtg and then in eve since i'm using eve pro i could uh, essentially just right click on my ethernet 4 link and i could change some stuff with the quality so let's add some let's add some latency let's say it's got 300 milliseconds latency and let's see if that actually carries over to prtg so let's go back to our monitoring system And I'll just open it up here. Well, I, I could just actually wait there as well. Like that's the nice thing. It'll show you what's happening. What we need to also just remember is since it is graphing the information, it is going to take like a, a little bit of time 
for this latency to pick up. Because if I do an actual ping to dot uh, 30 now, my ping is actually still one MS. So that's not actually going to reflect anything on PRTG at the moment. Let's see if I can break that link somehow. Because uh, I was actually expecting that Eve quality thing. Oh, it didn't even take it. 300. Let me just hit enter. Did it take it now? Looks like it. All right, let's go back to my, there we go. This looks a lot better. All right, so now I'm having 300 milliseconds latency on my link. Hey, <laughs> hello. All right, now this is actually a big like performance jump if you think about it because customers might have something like fiber lines and then their fibers are running at maybe speeds at less than one millisecond. I, I wouldn't say that that's like typical. Maybe you'll see customers using fiber running um, the average I'd say is between like five milliseconds like that. That is a good like performance for a fiber link. So five milliseconds, that's typically what you see. So if it's suddenly jumping to 300 milliseconds, you, you obviously know something's not right. And if it's on your core network, <laughs> like a jump like that is very crazy. Zabbix, um, so Zabbix I haven't actually worked with, so I can't really compare the two, but I could have a look at it and tell you. And also guys, this is, this isn't me like trying to like showcase PRTG to you. This is just a monitoring system that I know is, um, that is quite f like easy to set up from scratch and it's free, um, for the first 30 days. And then you can just do a hundred sensors. So that's why I'm using PRTG in, in this example. Um, if it was solar winds, I'd be a lot more limited, um, but that's also a, a fantastic uh, monitoring system. Although this is one thing I hate about monitoring systems. I, I don't really see it in PRTG, but something like solar winds, it has all of these, um, it's like they sell you parts of the system, you know, um, you can get this monitoring, but if you want to do the configuration via SNMP, then you need to like add an extra license or buy some extra package or, or stuff like that. I, I hate business models like that. I get why companies do it, but it, it feels very bad to me. Uh, let's just go back into our devices. I just want to see, there we go. So PRTG is reflecting that 301 millisecond jump. And now my graph is seeing that as well. So that's actually really cool. And that's very useful for me as a network administrator or somebody working in the NOC or even the architect, because now I know, hey, something's happened to this link. Uh, let's maybe just drop that or remove that uh, quality issue. So I'll drop the latency back down to zero MS. Let me just make sure it did actually take. All right, that looks fine. And I actually just want to add the rest of the routers quickly. So as you guys saw, I didn't do any type of configuration on the routers. The, this is just ICMP now. So the monitoring system, which is sitting at this network, is able to just use ICMP, use ping to establish how good the quality of the links are, which is fantastic. Um, I want to just now add all of these routers in my core network so that we can get a better like view of all of the things that we're monitoring. And again, you don't just need to monitor your core network. The big part why people will want to add something like a monitoring system is to monitor your customer's link so that if the customer link goes down, you can quickly tell them, hey, hello, Mr. Customer, how are you? Um, are you aware your link is off? Uh, we picked it up on our monitoring system because that looks fantastic. I mean, that looks like you're actually doing your job, which you should be doing because they can see that you actually care about their network or your network. You're trying to figure out if there's problems. They can tell you that, no, hey, there, there's a power issue maybe. And that's why the equipment's off. So don't worry about it. Or they'll say, no, everything went off. Uh, thank you for calling. Do you know what's wrong? And then you can maybe do some troubleshooting, get them to restart some equipment, check some cabling. And then if, if that all fails, then, then you can start looking deeper at the issue, which is why monitoring is really so critical. Okay, let's get back into our routers. So maybe I'm just going to monitor my 999 addresses. So for this, I might just quickly have to add a couple of static routes on my actual Windows machine. So let's just do a route add 999.0. Let's just push the whole slash 24 down to 192.168.74.30. So now in theory, my PRTG will, if it wants to get to any of these 
uh, loopback addresses, it will just go to router 7, and router 7 will ha know how to get to everything. Let's actually test and see if we can get to anything. And this is a good step as well. If I've loaded a monitoring um, system, and I want to test to see if, if I can actually monitor this stuff, just running a ping from that server or that host is, is a good way to just make sure. So let's see, can I ping 9999.1, which is router 1? I can. So if I go and ping that, obviously my PRTG will also function. So I'm just going to jump back into PRTG and let's start adding all of the routers. And it's so nice because we already know 9991 is router 1, 9992 is router 2. So we already know which routers are where. Fantastic. So let's just add them all. Uh, but I might add something like a group for this. And let's just call this... Uh, uh, we can call this our core network. And I might move that router 7 to the core network as well. Because now we've got a core network. And router 7, I want to move you, sir. Uh, let's just see where I can do that. If I go to the settings, probably. Uh, I don't see that I can move it from the settings. Uh, let, let's not waste too much time trying to figure that out. We, we can do that after. So core network, let's add some devices. So I'm going to add router1. And this router1's IP address was 9991. Um, Soccer big. I've, I have started from the beginning. Is there anything specifically you wanted to see? because the only thing that I didn't show you guys was me installing PRTG. It's already been installed. It's just a blank setup. So this is kind of like all from the beginning. What I'm doing now is you can also treat this as the beginning. I'm adding a new like ICMP sensor so that I can ping a router IP to see if it's up or not. So feel free to leave a message what, what you would like me to show you and I could go back or revisit that. So let's just add router one, which is also a Mikrotik. We can apply that. And again, now it's just a blank device. Let's just add a sensor, add a ping, and we can leave these pings as default. And I'm just going to add the rest of the network. So core network, I want to add quite a few devices now. So core network, router two, 9992, it is a Mikrotik, and okay. And before I add the sensors, let's just add all of the devices. Uh, add device, core network, router three, nine 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 three, and it's Mikrotik, and there we go. This is actually going <laughs> pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do router 49994. Add that. Yes, no, there's there's definitely a, a, a way, Bloody Mary. So if you look at your devices, there is actually like a scan that you can do on PRTG specifically now. So you could put in the range of the devices and it will automatically start adding things like sensors uh, such as the icmp sensors and also your snmp if it is allowed um, but for the sake of this video i'm just showing you how to add these devices manually because there is uh, to an extent it is also maybe better to add things manually um, not if, if you're adding 2,000 devices, obviously. So 2,000 devices you probably want to do in bulk, add them all for the ICMP. But when you start moving into things like the utilization and SNMP, then if you're just adding things in bulk, SNMP is also, you, you'll see when I start adding some SNMP strings, what's happening. Uh, but you, you kind of specify which interfaces you want to monitor, what you want to see. And if you're monitoring all your interfaces, you're going to actually start consuming so much um, resources on the server it's not that you can't do it go for it if you've got the capacity for it by all means you if you spin up a server that's got uh, 32 cpus and a terabyte of ram and stuff like that then 
add all of the sensors for every device and it will run fine but for me just running prtg off of my home computer i'm just gonna add a few devices and do it manually um but here you could do like the auto discovery stuff uh no 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 i don't want to add a remote probe i just want to add a device under my core network router 5 9995 uh, add you router 7 is already added so I'm not going to add it but router 6 I'm going to add I think router 7 is the last bit of my core network yes it is I might add that switch as well since that switch is a Cisco iOS switch I just want to see if I can access it from the management range or not so R6 and we can make this 9.9.9.6 .9 so Mikrotik there we go so now I've got all my Mikrotiks there but let's just start adding those ping sensors for all of them and this is actually now quite simple and straightforward since we're just <laughs> literally clicking add sensor select ping and creating the sensor so this will now allow us to actually monitor our whole core network to see, hey, is there issues here? Are there any packet loss issues or latencies? Because that is crucial for us to see. Let's add our ping sensor. <laughs> Sorry, I can hear my wife changing our baby's diaper. If you hear the baby, I apologize, but babies, man, you know, they are babies. All right, let's create a sensor and let's see if I look at all my sensors that's up, I can see router one, router two, router three, router seven. And then the other routers are still connecting data. I'm pretty sure. Let's just see if I can actually ping those routers though, because if I can't ping them, then they are going to reflect down. So ping nine, 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 six. Okay, I can get there. So technically they should clear up. There we go, there's 999. Well, six hasn't come up yet, but I know I can ping it. So it should start populating some data. There we go. <laughs> it's very strong. All right, router one, two, three, four, five, it's just six we're missing, but six should come online any second. Or was six there? Did I add six? Let's just go to our devices and have a look. Yes, okay, so I can see all of my devices, so six. And that's not nice because this is giving me a good overview. Um, sure, I can have a look at Zabbix. I mean, I, I think I've heard of it before. I just haven't used it personally um all right so now we've got a baseline to see what's happening with our network and it's it's so easy for us to see if, if anything happens let me show you so let's go on to eve and let's shut down router six so i'll just stop it uh has this stopped there we go it's busy stopping let's see can i ping 9996 no i cannot and the monitoring system should now in theory just pick up hey router six this thing isn't pinging anymore it, it should turn red and if you've configured your monitoring system correctly it might even do things like automatically create a ticket to tell people hey there's issue it could send out an email you know just to say guys <laughs> there is an issue this link just went down you guys should probably have a look at this link uh, let's just check here refresh Go to our devices. It does take a little bit of time for this to reflect because of the, because here we see the sensor now went yellow because it's picked up. Hey, something isn't right. There's something unusual. The request timed out and then it will go like into a red state because the link is actually down. It's picked up. The link has died. Uh, let's just also drop another router. Let's maybe drop router two. And let's see how well of my OSPF and stuff is working. Let's see, if, can I still get to 9991? Because uh, with those two routers down, maybe we cause some issues. Oh no, <laughs> 999, there we go. 
it's working still. Okay, but that ping I might even see on PRTG as well being a little bit weird. But our network is still functioning. It's just we're breaking it a little bit. Cool. There we see router six is now officially dead. It's offline. It can't get there anymore. The pings is expiring. And this is nice for me because if I look at the graph, I can actually see how long the link's been up, if it's gone down. Um, and it would be nicer for me if, if man, I'm not going to run the, the stream for like a day to show you guys exactly how nice the graphs come out. But the stream will be on for a bit. So hopefully we can have a nice like uh, comparison to show you. If I go back to router one, no, router seven, sorry, because this is the first router we added. There you can see what the like graph is doing. When it spiked to that 300 uh, millisecond, it was when we tweaked it, but it went down again to basically zero milliseconds, which makes it look a bit awkward because that is actually a massive jump from zero to 300. But let's break some more stuff on the network so that it actually looks interesting on PRTG. So it's not just the links that's down. Let's maybe tweak this um, quality make this 200 uh, let's change the quality here to 100 let's make both of them 100 change this one to 50 you know i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm just using the like whatever comes in my head first, but it's just so that the PRTG actually looks interesting, that it doesn't just look like uh, the latency is all the same. Uh, edit quality 100. And uh, let's just do this last link. Make this something lowish 10 milliseconds apply save and let's go back to our prtg uh, there you are let's see what you're doing so these are already starting to change our router one's latency is going up to 500 milliseconds how is that even possible that's such a big jump but if you think about it, it is actually making sense. Reason being is if I go onto my diagram, I know that I've actually got like zero milliseconds to, well, one millisecond to router seven. And then what we've done is we've tweaked the whole path. So just because the link between router one and router four is, what did I make that? Like 300 milliseconds, maybe even more. I, I, I can't remember exactly, but let's see. But that's, that's how latency works, guys. <laughs> so that's 200 milliseconds. So it's kind of like adding that 200 milliseconds is gonna be plus, what is this latency here? Plus this 100 milliseconds, plus this uh, latency that I've added here, which is 50 plus whatever. So it's, it's not just, um, well, that doesn't come <laughs> to the 500 that I'm seeing, but that's latency for you. Uh, so we've got two routers that's offline and we've got nice latency happening. So we can actually understand there's actually something wrong on the network, but let's just fix the stuff miraculously by just changing the qualities back and getting our routers back online. And then we're actually gonna start moving back into the SNMP uh, scope of this discussion because this is ICMP monitoring. There's nothing like more special about it it's literally just kind of using ICMP. It's using a ping to establish can it get to its host? And is there any um, packet loss or latency? And then it creates a graph based off of that information that it's collected. And that's, that's actually cool. That's really cool. Like I'm happy that it's working the way that it is. Let's just save all of that stuff, make our links look normal again. And then I'm gonna show you like what the graphs look like after we're near to ending the stream, like how cool it is and what it was doing. Apply this, save this. Um, did I edit this quality? Yes, but not by much. Apply that, save that. And let's just start our routers again. All right. Next step, let's play around with some SNMP so that we can actually see things like utilization. And, and it's not just 
link utilization. It can be stuff like CPU utilization or memory utilization or hard disk utilization, like how full is your disks. That's also really useful for us. But most network engineers will just use um, a monitoring system to look at what the uh, utilization on a link looks like. So first things first, we want to add SNMP on the router. So on router seven, now this is just for Mikrotik. I'm just going to go into, I think it is in, this, in the system. It could also be in the IP, let's just see. Yes, IP SNMP. We're just going to enable SNMP because that is disabled by default on Mikrotik. And then we get a community trap. So I'll just use the public community, but you can add different communities. You could add like my community and you could specify like what um, security is associated with it, which addresses can log in with it. Let's actually do that. 192.168.74.0 slash 24. We can give it read and write access, um, encryption methods, passwords. The passwords become more applicable when you're dealing with um, SNMP version three. But uh, yeah, let's just add SNMP. So IP, SNMP, enabled, contact info. The network Berg is the contact. I am in South Africa. I'm going to set this as my community for now. And then we can choose the trap version. So one, two, and three. Typically you might see people use version two because it's easier to set up. But uh, version three, it's, it's the latest, it's supposed to be greatest, so you can use that as well, because that is where you'll use your authentication to actually connect, which is more secure, obviously, you want that. But for our demonstration, I'm just going to use version 2, um, and I'm not going to set anything else for now. Let's just apply this. Before I do that, actually, let's, let's just set the community to public. We can do a community string just now. And let's see on my core network for router one, can I add an SNMP traffic string? So this monitors bandwidth and traffic on servers, PC switches using SNMP. So SNMP, very basic, but it, it polls and checks information and gathers. Wait, I can't add it on router one because Doi, I haven't added SNMP on router one. So let's just add it on router seven quickly. Um, router seven, we want to add an SNMP string. And this is what you want to see. And now it's giving me like a whole list. Hey, look, here's all the stuff you can add. So you could add all of the interfaces to be monitored, but I might just want to monitor interesting interfaces. So maybe I want to see what's happening on ether four, because I know that's going to my um, monitoring system what's happening to the untrust and how much traffic is my VR, my wireless and fiber customers doing. And we could essentially also add ether one, two, three. Let's just see on our, gra on our graph, ether one, two, three, four, and 10. So one, two, three, four, and 10, they were all being actually used by the device and then we've also got our VLANs and there it tells you this is in the Ethernet and this is a 802.1Q or a, a VLAN. So let's create the SNMP sensors and let's see what this does. And it's actually going to be very similar to the ping. It's collecting data to tell us how much traffic is passing over the link. Like what is it doing? And this might be useful for me if I go into, um, is my IXP up? I think so. Because I'm going to run a bandwidth test, even though I'm going to be capped at one meg, it will reflect on PRTG. It will show us, hey, you are maxing out your link, which is very useful because this is where you also get your customers who say, hey, my internet is so slow. Um, what's happening? You, you guys are a terrible ISP, but in the meantime, you're providing maybe, let's say, a 10 meg service to the customer and they are over utilizing the link. And with something like a monitoring system, you can prove to them, like you, you, you can tell them you are maxing out your link here. I've, I've got the report. It shows you've been maxing out your link every day around lunchtime 
probably the time every all of your employees or, or even maybe you but don't don't like insinuate things you can just show them hey around 12 30 your line is maxing out so there's probably something happening on the network at that time um maybe have a closer look at that and that is a good place to actually look at stuff like firewalls and restricting some traffic especially if it might be unwanted traffic because everybody loves watching a youtube video which is what most of you are watching right now since this is a live stream uh let's see this graph it it, it takes like five minutes for these graphs to actually have any valuable information so, so while that's happening let's maybe just run the bandwidth test so long from router 7 uh, to our internet exchange so I just want to see what that IP is 169.255.0.1 so let's just go into our tools bandwidth test I'm going to set this for TCP do a send receive 169.255.0.1 and let's do a bandwidth test it's going to connect and it's starting to test and see what the bandwidth looks like and this might kick me off of my microtech, which I hate, but it's fine. Let's just see if it actually reflects on the PRTG. And there we can already see there is some bandwidth uh, on the link. And it's like very minimal traffic. But that, that's now on Ether2. And Ether2 wasn't doing a lot of bandwidth anyways. Let's jump back to our router 7. And here we can see how much traffic each of the interfaces are doing. But Ether4, I think, is what's connected to my computer so that's why it's got more bandwidth but we're going to see this i think either this untrust or ether 10 one of these two is going to jump up i actually think this ether 2 it's already jumped up to be honest if you look at its uh, usage there it's 537 uh, kilobits so i already kind of know this is hitting its capacity because of that but let's not stop there let's maybe add some snmp on router one and we can do that by just going into 9991 admin blank here's my router one and i just want to add snmp enable it put it on public for now um the network work south africa apply this and let's see can i add snmp to router one Yes, and it's, it's really straightforward and simple. And it's nice that it's already kind of seeing which interfaces are actually um, being used. So it knows Ether1, Ether2, Ether3 is being used. Let's just look at our diagram. So on router 1, Ether1, Ether2, Ether3 is being used. But these are provider routers, so we don't have any cool things like customer VLANs or stuff like that sitting on them. So let's just create this. And let's add the two router six because that would be a good router to actually monitor. So let's grab router six, uh, get onto Winbox 9996, and IP, SNMP, and you see how straightforward this is. We've actually kind of done everything that I've wanted to show people with the monitoring. So maybe we will play around with the dude a little bit. Uh, the network Berg South Africa public to apply so router 6 we want to add SNMP as well and here we can see our VLANs that's going to our customers so this is very useful to us because now we can effectively monitor the traffic for our customers links to tell the customers hey customer you are definitely uh, using up all of your bandwidth and here is the proof and i'll show it to you hmm maybe there's something else we want to try with the monitoring and this is more related now to monitoring the customer links but i'll show this to you in a sec i just want to see that these uh, devices are actually getting all the traffic we want yes it is all right perfect we can see our traffic okay and it is two meg but that is two megabits on up and down if i the total traffic is two megabits if i just drop it down like that you'll see my in and out is basically being capped at one which is a limitation on a trial microtech well cloud hosted router microtech 
Okay. Awesome. Now I've got devices, I can see traffic. So let's actually start looking at maybe monitoring customer links, but this might be a little bit, I don't want to say difficult to do, but we're first going to have to bring up these customer links. So let's just start up these CPEs. And I maybe want to just stop that bandwidth test running on router seven. Can I select everything? Why am I struggling to select everything? Uh, there we go. I can shut down those PCs uh, on their own. I'll stop you. So our goal now is essentially to allow the PRTG server to be able to get to our CPEs so that we can also ping the CPEs. All right, so for your question, um, this isn't anything that I particularly use, so I'd have to actually do research myself on it, but I'm fairly certain you could accomplish that with either a script um, by just uh, setting it if the customer um, exceeds a certain like time limit that it will cut them off. But that, that, that I'm, I'm, very confident you can accomplish that with the script. I just don't know if you can accomplish it through your triple P settings anywhere. Like it, there's no way here to set like a um, timer for the profile. All right, let's see, my CPEs are up. I don't know if they'll have internet, maybe. Let, let's test and see, admin blank, ping 8888, but that's, irrelevant i don't really care much for them to have internet because the monitoring system just needs to be able to get to them i wonder can i ping 192.168.74.2 no uh can i ping dot 30 yes so i can get up to router 7 which is perfect <clears throat> 74.30 all right, so I have an idea why it's not working. So IP address print, IP firewall print, or not print, IP firewall NAT print. So currently we've got a masquerade rule out for 10, 201. All right, so it's traffic will be leaving out as the um, 10.201.0.6 address. So let's just add a route back from my Windows computer for that because this is probably why it's failing. So on my Windows computer, uh, let's just see this, there we go. So let's just add a route for 10.201.0. Let's also make it a slash 24. And let's see, can I ping anything? Now I can't ping dot two yet, which is actually what I'm expecting to ping. Uh, let's see, can I ping 10.201.0.6 from my actual PC or not? Can't ping it. But we might need to inject these routes with um, VRF. So let's just check on router seven. I just want to see how I'm learning those routes quickly. So on router seven, uh, let's look at all of our routes quickly. Well, let's look at our main routing table because this is where the traffic will come in. Do I see anything for that 10.201? I don't see anything for it in my main routing table. If I look at my wireless customers, there they are 10.201.00 slash 30. All right, so we might have to do something with the route importing and exporting, but this is again, more of a BGP feature we're gonna use now and route leaking. <laughs> and I think I actually mentioned the route leaking for management networks before, but this is something like else. You'll, you need to figure out how to get to your CPEs. If they're all on the same routing table, it's very easy. But in this case, I've got separate VRFs for the customers, so I need to figure out how to get to those VRFs. So what I might do is I might look 
at my routes. I just want to see how my how am I importing and actually I don't even have a management network at the moment. So I can't import anything like that. Hmm, let's figure this out quickly. I might add a management network, but that feels like a bit of effort just to get this working. Hmm, one thing we could do is maybe just a plain mangle. Let's just try that. Let's go into our mangles. And what I could do is I could say anything that is 192.168.74. Dot, uh, hang on, what is my IF config? IP config, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my IP is 74.1. That should be the IP that Eve sees. So let's say anything from 192.168.74.1. Wanting to go to 10, what is it? 201.00 slash 24. Let's just mark that. And that we will mark for the wireless customers. And then let's create a reverse rule quickly and just say anything from them will go against the main routing table. Let's just see if this works. There's a good chance it might not, but it is working. So this is a, a dirty way to make it work. I, I would advise not doing that. Um, essentially what you want to happen is you want to have a management network, a management VRF, and this management VRF should be able to get to all of your other VRFs. So you should have like a route that's unique to your management VRF that you're injecting to your um, other VRFs and you'll learn all of your other VRF ranges through your management VRF. So this way you'll be able to monitor the links more cleanly. The way that I did it just now, it is dirty. Try and not do this. This was just a a quick fix so that I can inject routes between the two different VRFs but it will now allow us to essentially go into our PRTG. And now we can add another group maybe. And this group we could call our wireless. Uh, we just wanna put this under the local probe. And the group's name will be wireless customers. And now we can start adding our wireless customers to that group. So let's add a new device. And let's look at our graph. So we've got a CPE 10, 11, and 12. So let's add CPE. I think we were working on CPE 11 just now. So let's add CPE 11 to our wireless customers. And we can just call it CPE 11. Or if you knew what your customers, who they were, let, let, let's say my customer was Mikritik. Wow, that would be the day. Mikritik is my customer. I'm big now. <laughs> but Mikritik. It's the wireless link. And maybe you give your customers a service ID for their link. So it could be something like the network Berg double or triple zero one. That, that is their circuit number that you've issued to them so that if they ever want to log a fault, they'll say, hey, my link is down. And they can tell them, what's your link ID? And it, they'll, they'll say, my or what's your circuit? And they'll say, my circuit number is TMB triple zero one, because this also makes that process a lot easier for people that's maybe working in your NOC that's doing your monitoring so that they know what the link's um, circuit is and then they can quickly search for that circuit on either the monitoring system or if they need to report it to an upstream provider, they can use the circuit number that you assigned from the upstream provider and quickly report the issue so that everybody can work together and have a good time. All right, let's add our uh, Mikrotik, so Mikrotik wireless TMB 0001, it's 10201.0.6 and it is a Mikrotik. And we're going to hit OK. And there is our first wireless customer, Mikrotik wireless TMB 0001. Let's add a, sis, uh, a sensor and it's just going to be a ping sensor so that we can see if there is ever any latency on our customer's link. Hang on, my music stop. <laughs> All right. Now we'll be able to see if there is ever any type of issue with our customer's link. And if there is an issue, you know, then we can quickly report it. There we go. There is our Mikrotik for the wireless customer. And we can see what the latency is for them. And if they're ever going to drop. That is phenomenal. I'm, I'm happy with that. 
um, if we added SNMP, maybe let's add SNMP. Um, I'll try and do it through the command line quickly, just off of memory, but we might IP SNMP. I actually think here you just go SNMP, um, set enabled. Yes, uh, let's do a trap version. It's version two. I'm not going to set anything else. Maybe I'll set my location south. Oh, we want to do that south Africa. And maybe we want to set our contact the network Berg. And that's basically what we did on the other routers just from the command line. And now we can also add some SNMP, but now we've got redundant SNMP as well, because now I'm going to monitor the SNMP from my core router for the same customer. There's, there is CP11 already. So if I add SNMP on here, And I add, let's just see which, oh, did I set it as a VLAN? It seems like it. Let's just add the VLAN and create that. All right. So now I have redundant sensors because I've got a sensor from the wireless customer, but I've also got a sensor um, on router six for the same customer. Quick question, uh, and I wonder if anybody's going to pick this up. If I look at this sensor, uh, for router six, and I open up this utilization sensor for uh, CP11, and let's just switch to the live data. This is actually something that catches a lot of knock engineers out when they first start doing monitoring. Um, and I know because when I started in networking, I started as a knock engineer. I was also just monitoring the links and reporting faults and such. And that's what got me into networking. Um, but let's see if I look at router six, which is the CPE or not the CPE, the, the provider edge for our ISP. And I look at my traffic, um, like spikes or whatever, you'll see there's a traffic in and a traffic out. So if we're looking at from the perspective of router six, the traffic that comes in, which is like, you know, traffic that's being downloaded is actually the traffic that's being uploaded from the customer. And similarly, the traffic out is going to be the traffic that the customer is downloading, but it's the, the traffic that your router, your router six is sending out. So that is also maybe why it's better to just monitor on the CPE directly because then it makes more sense because the customer might be complaining, hey, my downloads are slow. And then you're looking and you're like, your downloads are slow, but I see your your traffic out is maxing out. It doesn't make any sense. Why, why is your upload like um, maxing out, but you say your download is slow. Like that's something that sometimes co like confuses some people. So just be aware of that understand the direction that the traffic is coming in. So traffic that leaves CP11, that, that, that is traffic out, will be seen as the traffic in on router six. And on the other side, traffic that leaves router six to CP11 will be the traffic that comes in on CP11. So that should help at least somebody like not get confused hopefully by that concept that your interfaces is a huge role. I might just remove um, this CP11 sensor here for the string. So let's delete that object. And now I will only monitor the traffic from the customer and not on my core network, which is also fine, but you can monitor it at either space. It just, the sensor was redundant at that point. Personally, I think it's probably better to just monitor the traffic on your core routers and then monitor latency at the CPE because it's good to monitor the latency at the CPE because this is a good reference to tell you if the link is off or not, because if this happens, um, let's say this is a wireless link, the link breaks, 
there the the the, the link just it's gonna break it, it, it dies it's gone it doesn't exist anymore that the tower went off it burned down or something somebody stole the batteries at the tower and the equipment's lost power um which is a actual normal occurrence actually that that happens with a lot of places um, i'm not sure how prevalent that is uh, in other countries but it happens in za sometimes like uh, people would take out batteries out of a tower and get away with them all right so let's look at our prtg and let's see what's happening so prtg is going to do the same thing where it's going to pick up hey um that cost that that cp11 something's weird <laughs> something's not good you should probably have a look but at this point it won't send out a notification yet it would just pick up hey something's something's not all right here you should probably investigate and then we see the traffic graph is also doing the same thing because it's now picked up hey the we're not picking up any anything on snmp anymore and pretty soon we should see that the link is actually picking up as down so i'm just refreshing this by clicking here but it, it does take a few minutes so let's just look at our devices nice and yellow and these devices are still monitored and it's gonna take like two three more minutes so i i don't really want to waste time like we'll 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 get there when they go off but i think this is a good showcase of what we can do with monitoring as a base and how quick and easy it was to set up i mean all that i really did is i downloaded prtg from their site i installed it on my machine it took like five minutes and i started up the stream added some devices and sensors with you guys and now we're already monitoring our network we can see if links go down if they go up if there's latency if there's issues with the traffic we we know what's going on there we go so our links are officially down for that customer so now we can effectively if i was working in the NOC and i'm monitoring the links i could see okay that link went off let's troubleshoot and see what's happening and be proactive about our network and be like able to troubleshoot and fix everything in a timely manner because this is what it's all about like <laughs> it's a great way to um, deliver a service all right so this has actually covered what i wanted to cover in the stream i i don't think there's more for me to add I'll, otherwise it's just going to be me uh blabbering on really so i'd like to ask does anybody have any questions about monitoring or maybe anything else that you want to know if we maybe have some time we can look at some other topics but the monitoring is covered like <laughs> that was it so thanks for watching the monitoring part let's see if there's anything else that we can maybe uh, look at else we will call it an early night so while you guys are figuring out your questions because i know it takes a few minutes for us to like sync i'll just quickly look at some of the settings here for that other question with the triple p uh, our profiles can we set anything there no no the limits won't do anything these scripts won't do anything i actually think i saw something about radius yeah i actually think radius might be the way to go for that but i really don't do much with the triple poe side either for customers i know how to configure it i've delivered the service before but majority of the customers that i deal with work more on um different services it's like mpls and like like they they, they uh, it, it's very rare for me to uh, set up something like triple poe all right pretty good stop this all right cool i'm going to wrap things up then i'm going to stop the lab and then i'm going to thank you all for watching tuning in i really appreciate it and i will catch you guys in another stream 
Uh, currently what we use is human ping watchdog. <laughs> yeah, man. Anyways, guys, have a fabulous evening and I will definitely see you next week. I'm, I, I want to try and again, make more just normal videos like tutorials, but I'm having such little time right now. And it, besides the videos, like I've also said it, I'm busy also making a MTC and a online course, which I'm still trying to figure out where I want to put everything and all that stuff. But it's, it's pretty crazy right now. Anyways, thanks everybody. Catch you in the next stream. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.